Okay, so we're going to talk about the cortical bulbar tracts or the cortical bulbal spinal tracts. These are all the tracts involved with uh, sending motor information to your head and neck via cranial nerves. Uh, so the cranial nerves we'll talk about are V3, 7, 12, 9, and 10. Um, and really these aren't too bad if you break them down individually. You just have to know where they're going to and whether they're bilateral or contralateral. I do kind of like drawing them in this schematic because A, it helps you identify it on a practical, and B, it's just good to see the picture as a whole. Um, so as always, we'll look at our cross sections. So first of all, in our cortex and diencephalon, we need to remember, because these are like our cortical spinals descending, uh, they'll travel through our internal cortex and through our cerebral peduncles. We can also see our cerebral peduncles here in the midbrain, which is visible here histologically. Once we get into the mid pons, so I did break down the mid pons and the caudal pons here, uh, only because it's important to discern that the mid pons is where five is, whereas the caudal pons is where the seventh nerve is. So in the mid pons here, I see my fifth nerve leaving laterally. So it's this large nerve right here leaving laterally between the primary motor cortex of trigeminal and the primary sensory our primary motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and the primary sensory nucleus. So motor, medial, sensory, lateral. And I see a large trigeminal nerve separating those. That's in the mid pons. Versus the caudal pons, I'm gonna see my facial nerve leaving kind of anterior laterally. And the facial nerve arises from my facial nucleus, which is located here. It will actually travel posteriorly to wrap around my abducens nucleus to create this facial colliculus right here before leaving. So again, I can see all that here. Facial nucleus, seventh nerve wrapping around the sixth nucleus to leave laterally versus this is the trigeminal nucleus leaving laterally between the sensory and the motor of, of five. Finally, in our rostral medulla, but really in most of the medulla, you can see this, um, your hypoglossal nucleus and then your large nucleus ambiguous, which is kind of this, as the name it suggests, this ambiguous nucleus out here, pretty hard to see, but a lot of important stuff comes from there. Okay, so let's walk through these one at a time. So we'll start with um, the cortical bulbars for five. So remember the only branch of trigeminal that has motor control is V3, and that's specifically going through the muscles of mastication. Uh, in this case, they're gonna be, it's gonna be bilateral innervation. So for all these, we'll start in the face region of the motor homunculus, and so we'll travel through my internal capsule through my cerebral peduncles until it synapses again bilaterally on my motor nucleus of five. You don't need to know where any of these pathways decussate. Again, just know if it's bilateral or contralateral. At that point then it leaves through my trigeminal nerve to go through those muscles of mastication. Okay. Next we'll talk about the seventh nerve. So seven's a little tricky um, because there's difference between innervation above the eyes and below the eyes. Above the eyes, um, say if you're wrinkling your forehead, this is going to be a bilateral innervation, versus below the eyes is going to be contralateral. Uh, this really comes into play when you're trying to figure out a person's having a stroke or some sort of other seventh nerve palsy. Uh, we'll talk about that, uh, I think, third test. But for now, just remember that above the eyes is bilateral, below is contralateral. So let's first draw above the eyes. So again, say we're wrinkling our forehead. It's going to move from our motor homunculus here through the internal capsule, through the cerebral peduncles, until it gets down to my caudal pons, at which point this is gonna go to bilateral seventh nuclei, and then travel out to the bilateral upper face. In comparison, if we had one coming from below the eyes, say you were trying to smile, we'll do it on this side, it's gonna go again through the same structures until it gets to the caudal pons, at this point, it's only gonna to go to our contralateral seventh nucleus, synapse there, and then move out to below the face for your smile. Okay, next one to talk about is the 12th nerve, or hypoglossal. This is for movement of the tongue, and specifically, this is gonna be an only contralateral pathway. So, if we wanna move our tongue, we'll again go through our internal capsule, our cerebral peduncles, until we head all the way down to our medulla, and again, this is contralateral, so we'll decussate. Go to my hypoglossal nucleus, and go out to my contralateral tongue. Now remember, tongue muscles actually push 
the tongue in the opposite direction. So if I want to move my tongue left, I'm activating my right hypoglossal nucleus, but my left cortex. So remember, tongue pushes away. You can also remember that well, tongue will point towards the nucleus that's damaged. So if we have two structures pointing here, and I knock out this nucleus, I knock out the ability to do this, and so now my tongue is pointing towards the nucleus that was affected. Last thing we're gonna talk about is our ninth and 10th nerves. So these combine to do swallowing, speech, and all those kind of laryngeal, pharyngeal um, actions. So these are also gonna be bilateral. Let's start up here, through internal capsule, th through cerebral peduncles, all the way down. And again, it's bilateral, so it's gonna bifurcate. And this point is gonna go into these large nucleus ambiguous. And then from there, it will also travel bilaterally to the pharynx and the larynx. This makes sense to me just because swallowing is so important. Um, you lose your ability to swallow and you can very easily choke and die. So it makes sense that this would be a bilateral innervation. Okay, so quick recap. Um, V3, or a mandibular branch of the trigeminal, is gonna send a bilateral innervation to the muscles of mastication through the mid-pons. Our facial nerve above the eyes is bilateral versus below the eyes is contralateral. Those will synapse down um, and then synapse within the caudal pons. The tongue is gonna be only contralateral within the medulla. And remember that is, if you're activating muscles on that side, you're actually pushing your tongue away. And then finally, nucleus ambiguous contains nine and 10, which has to do with swallowing and speech and will be a bilateral innervation. And those are the cortical bulbars.